All right. So Maria, thank you so much for joining the Evans School today to talk to some Evans School students about the Government Accountability Office and the type of work that you do. And I would love to just ask you a few quick questions for students who are unable to connect with you personally today. So let's just go ahead and start out. I wonder if you can give us a brief overview of what is the Government Accountability Office and what type of work might a policy or an MPA student expect to do at the GAO? Great. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, and, you know, GAO is commonly referred to as the government watchdog. Um, we provide Congress, heads of executive branch agencies, and the general public with timely, objective, fact-based research um, and reliable information. At the highest level, all the work we do is intended to help save the government money and to help um, government programs and policies work more efficiently and effectively. Um, we do that based on responding to requests from congressional committees and subcommittees, as well as mandates written to law that ask us to look at a huge range of research projects. Um, our work covers basically any area that receives federal funding. And what that ultimately means is we have a number of mission teams focused on a huge range of issue areas. So for example, natural resources and environment, defense capabilities and management, homeland security, healthcare, physical infrastructure. And so we work across all these issue areas to basically um, plan, execute, and develop research projects. Um, for students, typically what that means is you'd be a, an active member of one of our small teams conducting this work. Uh, research projects typically take between, I'd say nine and 15 months to plan and execute. So given where um, you're at on a given project, that can mean different things for day-to-day -day work. Um, early in the job, for example, that could involve meeting with what we refer, to, we refer to as our internal stakeholders. So we've got statisticians, methodologists, uh, attorneys, economists um, that we sort of rely on to, after we've done additional uh, initial background work, um, to meet with them to really plan the, the specific scope of our engagement, really clearly define our research obje objectives, um, and develop a methodology to ensure we're being objective, fact-based um, in our approach. Um, from there, as we jump into the audit work phase, you might be conducting interviews with federal agency employees or state and local offici officials that are recipients of federal funding or um, doing data analysis on, for example, a large agency data set. Um, as we move through the work and once we've collected all the evidence and assessed the evidence, we begin to develop messages and start drafting um, what will ultimately be a publicly available research report. And, um, we have a very rigorous quality assurance process, uh, so the report drafting and review process does take a number of months, um, but again, we're working with our internal stakeholders, we're continually revising, we're ensuring we've got support to back up the factual statements we make, that all of our data are complete and accurate and reliable, um, and continuing to refine the, the message and the report. So, you know, at, on any given day, depending where the job is, you'd be involved in various parts of that overall process. Yeah, awesome, thank you. That was a really helpful, broad overview there and really sounds like an MPA student would have the chance to apply a lot of the skills that they're learning in this degree. I wonder if you could share maybe one piece of advice that you would give to an MPA student who is interested in applying for a job with the GAO. Sure. I think I'd say kind of lean into being a generalist. Um, while I mentioned we work in a number of issue areas, we really focus on just having the overall skill set um, necessary to conduct this engagement work. Um, and that I think really is keyed in on the oral communication skills, the written communication skills, um, developing your ability to understand and comprehend what could be potentially very complex information, um, but to distill it in a way that is understandable for your audience, whether that is congressional staff or the general public. I think that's a key part of what we do is, you know, 
really focusing on critical thinking, making logical connections between points and taking highly complicated information and um, really sorting out what is the bottom line, what are the key messages. And I think, you know, at the Evans School, you're getting a huge number of skill sets. Those can all be beneficial, but it is some of that foundational work of how you communicate that information to others. Um, and the way you can draw from resources to, to help you sort of understand and highlight what key themes are, what key messages are that really um, are contributors to success at GAO. Yeah, that's great advice. Thank you. Uh, last question I'd like to ask. I wonder if you can share how is the GAO thinking about, about racial equity and social justice and what does that look like bringing it into the work that's being done at the GAO? Yeah, that's a great question and obviously incredibly timely. And I think there's a variety of ways that GAO is focused on this. You know, at the highest level, our core values is that everyone is valued, respected, and treated fairly. Um, and that includes really ensuring we have a trusting, inclusive workspace um, that increases engagement and is broadening perspectives across the agency. We try to be, we do everything we can to be an equal opportunity uh, employer. We have recruiting efforts uh, intended to expand our diversity recruiting pipeline as well to ensure we're recruiting and retaining a really talented, diverse mix of employees. Um, within the agency, our employees themselves are major drivers of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we have a huge number of um, individual inclusion groups, um, community organizations. We have, for example, an advisory council um, for people with disabilities. We have an Asian American liaison group. We have a Blacks in government group, um, uh, LGBTQA employee association, just to name a few, a huge number of opportunities for employees to be involved with their peers on issues that they feel a strong connection to. Um, I would also highlight that recently GAO put together a, we call it our watch blog, but it's a GAO blog post on race in America um, in the context of, of the recent Black Lives Matter movement and all the political changes where we really tried to highlight um, how GAO for decades has been covering work in a number of areas. Um, that touch on these key issues. And so those are broken out by subject. It gives the reader a chance to kind of identify um, through issue areas like education, voting rights, equal employment, um, racial pro profiling, healthcare, all the different ways our work has tried to, to touch on these, these complex issues. Um, and finally, I would say we're even very recently considering ways in which we can infuse diversity, equity, inclusion in our actual engagement process. And by that, I mean the way we scope and plan our work, um, which is taking the form as some new audit tools we're highlighting um, and piloting ways to, to ensure that regardless of what topic area we might be working on and what our um, project is focused on, are we ensuring that we're going out of our way to ensure we're collecting perspectives from underrepresented groups, for example, and giving them a chance and providing space and time within our publicly available reports to provide those perspectives as well um, versus focusing more, you know, for example, just on the executive agency's branch perspectives on a particular issue. So it's something we're focused on and doing our best to incorporate at all levels. Yeah, thank you for providing that overview there, especially, you know, from the very top levels of the organization down to what that looks like as you're doing audits and, and considering how that moves forward in the future. That's all the questions that I have. Thank you so Great. much for sharing this with the Evans community, and we really appreciate your time. Happy to do so. Thanks. Thank you.